7 p.m. on October the 23rd, and we are in our normal session. In just a moment, I'll ask everyone to stand. I'm going to lead us in an invocation, and following that, we'll be led in the pledges to the American flag and the Texas flag by Councilmember Rowe. Would you please stand? Gracious creator and sustainer of life, we are indeed grateful for the manifold blessings that you pour out upon us. Even though at times we maybe don't realize them, we know they are from you and that they benefit us in many ways that we, in fact, don't understand. We thank you, Father, for the dedication of the people that have gathered here tonight, not only those citizens that are here to be part of their community, but the council and staff who play a critical role in how Trophy Club grows and how it continues to be a great place to call home. We ask for your guidance, your inspiration, uh, in everything that we do and deliberate about. In Jesus' name, amen. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. You may be seated. It is time for citizens' presentations. This is an opportunity for citizens to address the council on any matter, whether or not it is posted on the agenda. The council is not permitted to take action on or discuss any presentations made to the council at this time concerning an item not listed on the agenda. The council will hear presentations on specific agenda items prior to the council addressing those items. You may speak up to four minutes or a time limit determined by the mayor or presiding officer. To speak during this item, you must complete the speaker's form that includes the topics of your statement. Topics of presentation should be limited to matters over which the council has authority. Anyone wishing to speak to this council tonight? Holly, I didn't see anybody. No, mayor. All right. We will then move on to item one, announcements and reports. Uh, receive the town manager's update, providing input regarding early voting, fall community garage sale, prescription drug take back, Veterans Day ceremony, fire grants, and strategy map. Mr. Class. Evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, we've got a busy update for you tonight. Uh, early voting for the upcoming November 6th election began yesterday uh, on the 22nd. We'll run through Friday and November 2nd. And as in the past, the uh, current voting, early voting uh, facility for Denton County voters is at the Roanoke Library, and for our Tenton count, uh, Tarrant County voters is at the South Lake Town Hall. The um, annual uh, Trophy Club Women's Fall Garage Sale will take place this Saturday, October 27th. It'll run from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. and is priced at $20 for uh, sale permits that can be purchased through the Women's Club. Um, all the proceeds from the sale permits um, will benefit the scholarship program for graduating students at Myron Nelson High School. I'd like to remind everybody that any unsold items can be taken to the town thumb after the garage sale at one o'clock and there'll be uh, multiple vehicles and trucks standing by to take those donated items. In addition, the same Saturday, uh, October 27th, between 10 and 2 uh, p.m., Trophy Club Police Department will partner with the Drug Enforcement Administration uh, to focus on removing potentially dangerous controlled substance from our town medicine cabinets. The National Take Back Day provides an opportunity for our residents to uh, surrender expired, unwanted, and unused pharmaceutical controlled substances. Uh, they'll be able to do that this year uh, right here at Town Hall. Uh, we'll be set up in the lobby right outside the police uh, department. And more information on this can be found on the Trophy Club website. <clears throat> In addition, the annual Trophy Club Veterans Day ceremony will be held uh, this year on Sunday, November 11th at 2 p.m. at Military Veterans Memorial located at Independence Park West. Uh, we will encourage uh, all our residents to join the Metroport Veterans Association as we honor all our military branches and those brave men and women who so honorably serve our nation. And then also, I'm very proud to announce that the Trophy Club Police Department successfully sought and was awarded a FEMA grant recently, which will offset the costs associated with the fire marshal. 
who will oversee fire prevention and enforcement programs for the fire department. <clears throat> the $105,000 grant uh, was awarded in September and will fully support the hiring, equipping, salary, and benefits for the full-time fire marshal. And it's a uh, one-year grant that's refund, uh, renewable up to three years, and it's at no cost to the town. Uh, acceptance of the grant was contingent upon a $5,200 in matching funds, and the MUD uh, number one graciously provided that for us. So um, that's, a, that's an outstanding uh, grant for us uh, in our town. In addition, the fire department also successfully sought and was awarded a grant uh, through Firehouse Subs Public Safety Foundation uh, in the amount of $21,900 for the purchase of 14 automatic external def defibrillation uh, devices. Uh, these will be distributed throughout the town at all our uh, number of our facilities and our parks. Um, I'd like to personally thank uh, Chief Carroll uh, for being aggressive and seeking these grants. He's not here with us tonight, um, but based upon his actions, and his staff's actions, we have significant enhancements at no cost to our community. And again, I'd like to commend him for his efforts. And then lastly, um, <clears throat> we have an unveiling of sorts, if you guys would. Uh, it's dealing with the strategy map that uh, we've been working with uh, over the past, uh, actually, few months. I'd like to go over that with you just a little bit. Yeah, go ahead, please. <laughs> so, um, the purpose of the, you know, we have been working together on this uh, for a number of months. It's really designed to serve as a guide for all of us in the day-to-day, week-to-week, month-to-month, um, and year-to-year -year operation of the town. And as you can see, the strategy map encompasses uh, council's vision, mission, priorities, and goals for our town, which is now tied to our new staff merit-based evaluation system which is anchored by our core values, stewardship, service, teamwork, accountability, and leadership. And as a follow on to this, you're gonna notice at tonight's meeting and then moving forward, all staff reports and presentations will now include a reference to the link of the council's goals and priorities, which will ensure that our efforts align with your desires and the overall town strategy. And I'd like to thank you all support and your input uh, for the strategy map. And also, I'd like to thank Jill for um, creating what I think is really an exceptional brand, which I hope will serve us all as a powerful reminder as we move th through the strategy and for the years to come. So with that, um, I'd like to take, uh, happy to take any questions if you have any. Council, anyone have questions for the manager? Looks great. Yeah, I like it. Appreciate it. Good. Well, well, thank thank, you, very thank much. you very much. All right, moving on. Item number two, receive town council liaison's update. Discussion of same, park and recreation board meeting of October the 15th, 2018. Our council liaison is council member Fleury. Thank Alicia. you. Unfortunately, I was not able to attend. I was at work, but I was caught up by our director of parks and rec. So thank you very much for that, Tony. A um, lot of discussions took place being um, our playgrounds are being renovated. Our ADA swing will be installed at Freedom Dog Park. Um, soon and as well next spring our uh, Jagger's Journey will be installed um, at Harmony Park which is our ADA compliant playground. We've had median reservations and plantings going along Indian Creek and um, in keeping with being a nationally recognized tree city all of our tree trimming is taking place now canopies being raised and replacing existing trees that have outlived their purpose such as uh, the Bradford pears. Um, a really Big thing that everyone should be interested in, we are finally getting cameras installed at Indy Park East and at Freedom Dog Park. So I know a lot of our residents were um, curious about that. So those should start, I believe, next week. Um, we are also going to start putting out our winter color, all of our uh, flowers and annuals for our winter planting. Our ongoing recreational activities were updated. We have 10 bocce ball teams going. Kickball has 11 teams, and we almost have enough teams for flag football. We have three teams committed. We just need one more, so if anyone's interested in flag football, we just need one more team. We can get that underway. 
Trophy Club Park renovations have started, painting of restrooms, the guard shack. There's also a system update that's going to allow us to track uh, the users of the park, being residents or non-residents. And uh, even through all the bad weather, we still had two disc golf tournaments take place. And as always, staff is um, constantly working on new grants for the park and the master plan. Season's over for the community pool, so winterization has begun, equipment maintenance is going on there, and we're also working on more activities uh, to utilize our community pool for next season, like dive in movie days, more story times, more theme days, and maybe some water aerobics, so more things at the pool that our residents can partake in. Unfortunately, with the weather, uh, Bad News Pet Fest and Community Night had to be canceled, but the good news is Community Night is going to be rescheduled for November 3rd from 5 to 9, so hopefully people can attend that. And other fun things coming up will be, uh, this one's kind of fun, Goat Yoga for next season, Fright Lights Yard Contest in October. The Fall Family Camp Out is November 10, and so far we've got over 50 families registered. We have our Christmas Light Contest November 16th through December 17th. A ginger House event, Gingerbread House event uh, for December 14th. Letters to Santa November 17th to December 4th, and we will have our box uh, out front like we do every year. And Christmas in the Park uh, December 8th, 6.30 to 8.30 uh, for that celebration. There was also discussion on the possibility of a park um, in is it Canterbury Hills. Um, just initial talks, of course, there'll be grants uh, that will have to be uh, applied for for that. Um, so that was discussed for future, maybe in 2020. And lastly, we discussed um, the possibility of creating a Parks and Recreation Scholarship for Byron Nelson High School students, and this again would be a 2020 item as well. Uh, again, incorporating the school and the town and um, consider study geared towards parks and rec recreation will be a guideline. Volunteer hours served would of course be considered. And uh, the applicant would have to reside in Trophy Club and attend Byron Nelson High School and there will be an essay required. And that is our update for the last meeting. Council, any questions? I see that Councilmember Jensen would like to speak. Yes, sir. I'm surprised to hear from uh, liaison flurry that we're getting cameras installed at two different locations. It's the first I've heard of it, so I'd love some more feedback from uh, Tony. All right, Tony. We Good evening, Mayor and Council. Yes, we took the opportunity to piggyback, if you will, off the um, contractor that's going to install the cameras at Freedom Dog Park, and we're going to install two at Independence Park East near How the fields. How many at the dog park? Two, two at the dog park. Right, and uh, was this done with the approval of uh, Chief? Yes, that's okay. correct. What was the cost, total cost? For Independence East, all of all four of them. Uh, for Freedom Dog Park, I don't recall, but for Independence East was a little bit over five thousand dollars. So you're saying Independence East was five k? You don't know what the dog park cost? I, okay. I believe it was. I'm sorry. Uh, what type of feed are you getting on these? I assume you don't have somebody watching a live feed. We. Okay. Good evening, Council. Uh, there will be a live feed. Um, I can't give you a number, but I will get that information for you for the cost of those cameras shortly. The, the chief knows that number. Right. Uh, and I'll try to get that. But yeah, it'll be a, uh, some a wireless feed, and that's what the final stages are now is get the networking operating correctly. So a feed uh, here at the station. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I have lots of questions about yeah. that, but mm -hmm. we'll, uh, I'll save that for later. Okay. Yeah, we'd like to know how long the tapes are able to be stored, so how big of a sure. DVD player that you got. I'll be happy to get that info for you. All that fun <laughs> stuff. Yeah, <laughs> what, you know, what type of clarity you're expecting to mm -hmm. get? Are you expecting to get uh, license plate numbers? That's, uh, that is it. Watch the, I'd just like, I think we need, this is, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm surprised that we're just not hearing this, Tom. It's really shocking, so. Yeah, that'll be a, the objective because we have had an increase in offenses in the dog park, so we want to investigate we'll, those. We'll, we'll provide you. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's our goal. If we're going to do it, we want to do it right, 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 so we can yes, sir. get that. You bet. Yeah. We'll deal with a ton of cameras yeah. at fitness centers ripping off everybody in the parking lot, so I feel the pain. Yeah. 
we'll, we'll provide you a more specific update. Thanks, Gary. Great. Thanks. Hopefully it'll be a great deterrent, too, now that people know it's being videoed. Hopefully that will help as well. All right. Thank you. Anybody else have a question? All right. Hearing no one, we will then move on to the consent agenda. All matters listed on the consent agenda are considered to be routine by the town council and will be enacted by one motion. There will not be a separate discussion of these items. If discussion is desired, that item will be removed from the consent agenda uh, and will be discussed separately or considered separately. We have items three and four. Does anybody wish to remove either of those items? Hearing no one wishing to do so, I would then entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda items three and four. I make a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll at second. Moved by Mayor Pro Tem Schaffner, seconded by <coughs> Councilmember Rowe. All in favor, show your hands. It is unanimous, no opposed. Um, it is 7.15 p.m. and we will convene into a um, public hearing for case number PDAMD 18-002. Byron Nelson High School Edition Phase 2. Conduct a public hearing regarding a request to amend ordinance number 2813 PNZ, Plan Development District number 28, in order to provide a site plan package for the proposed building addition at Byron Nelson High School within the Northwest Independent School District boundaries on a property containing approximately 93 acres of land and generally located northeast of the intersection of Bobcat Boulevard and Marshall Creek Road within Trophy Club's town limits. Any comments, Lisa? Yes, sir. Good evening, Mayor and Council. The purpose of this item is to consider a PD amendment to PD 28. The strategic links for this item are nature and beautification to improve the aesthetic and recreational value of the town and infrastructure and development to collaborate effectively with other governmental entities. Northwest ISD is requesting approval of a site plan package uh, for a building addition primarily located on the east end of Byron Nelson High School. The existing cul-de-sac will be replaced with a courtyard and a surrounding three-story addition to match the exi existing school. In addition, an entry plaza has been created in the parking lot at the front entrance to the school. It will provide a uh, wide landscaped walkway between the football stadium and the, um, and the school. This proposal meets all the parking, landscape, masonry, and lighting requirements, and no revisions are proposed for the development standards. The PNZ Commission considered this request on October 4th and confirmed that the exterior building materials match the school and are the same materials approved for the field house. The commission unanimously approved, or unanimously recommended approval, excuse me, as presented, and staff recommends approval, and I am available for questions, as is our applicant. All right, thank you. Any citizens wish to speak on this item? Seeing no one seeking the floor, we will close the public hearing at 7.18, and reconvene into our regular session and, dis and discuss item 5B, consider take appropriate action regarding a request to amend ordinance number 2018-13 PNZ, Plan Development District number 28. It is the same item that was available uh, and presented to you in the um, public hearing. Council, any questions or comments at this time? Does anyone from the district wish to speak? Eric, you wish the floor? Motion to approve as presented. Second. Second. Beat ya. I do have one question. <laughs> <laughs> All right, a motion by Councilmember Jensen, seconded by Councilmember Rowe. And at this time, you would like to speak to him, is that right? I'd like to know which turf they're going to be using on the roof. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Exactly. A green one. How's that? That's good. <laughs> but if it's on the roof, no one will see it, right? Someone will complain. Drone, a drone. No, will be, uh, <laughs> oh, the drone will that's right. A drone will fly over and say that it's There's too long and needs to get mowed or something. Yeah. All right. So we have a motion to approve and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor of approval, show your hands. All opposed, same sign. It is unanimous. It is approved. Look Thank you. To it. Thank you, guys. High school. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
You are getting easy. Easy. It is 7.19 p.m. and we will open the public hearing on case O-AMD-17-004, artificial turf. Conduct a public hearing regarding a town initiated request to amend landscaping regulations in section 14-02-352 D5 and section 14-02-352 G5 of the Trophy Club Code of Ordinances to allow artificial tur turf on residentially zoned properties. And Tommy, you have the floor. Uh, thank you. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council. The purpose of this item is to consider an appropriate and take appropriate action towards the town initiated request to amend the landscape ordinance and allow artificial turf on properties zoned and used for residential purposes. Um, the uh, strategic link for this item is nature and beautification uh, and maintain town assets, services, and codes of ordinances that preserve the natural beauty of the town. On December of 17, uh, the request came from council to look into uh, being able to add uh, artificial turf grasses in the backyards of uh, residences. Um, and we were sent to look into that and we came back in February, February 13th to be exact, uh, with a proposal for an ordinance change. Uh, and at that time we had been given uh, the information from y'all and we were sent back to go ahead and amend that to show that it would be okay to be used in all aspects of the yard front, rear and, and side yards. Uh, the attachments that y'all have are the same ones that came in in February for the pros and cons. Uh, the only additional one that was added into there was a basic type style of uh, applying the turf grass to the yard to where this, you get sufficient drainage as close and nearly to as you can when you have natural sod grasses on the ground with the earth to absorb. Uh, the uh, commission, the PNZ commission heard this case on October 4th uh, and recommended approval of staff's proposal with the following conditions. Turf is limited to areas not visible to public view a permit will be required prior to installation and only on lots that do not abut, abut a golf course. Staff recommends at this time approval of the ordinance as submitted. And I will leave it to y'all for questions. All right, Council Member Schaffner, do you wish to speak at the public hearing or later when we consider the items? At, when we consider. Council Member Jensen, how about Same. you? All right. Any citizen wish to speak at the public hearing on this item? Seeing that no one wishes to do so, we will close the public hearing at 7.23 p.m. We will now consider item 6B, which is the same item of artificial turf um, regarding an ordinance of the town initiated request to amend landscape regulations in section 1402.352 D5 and section 1402.352 G5 of the Code of Ordinances redealing with artificial turf. Mr. Schaffner, you have the floor. Yeah. First of all, I, I just need a clarification. So in the staff report, it says staff recommends approval of ordinance 2018-27PZ as presented. So you're not incorporating PNZ's recommendations? We are not. Okay, so, so if we approve this as presented, we are going to bypass PNZ, correct? On, that, on is, their that is correct. Okay. Their, their recommendations will not be included, were not included in our staff report for acceptance. Okay. Um, I, I was, I listened to the meeting today and um, I, I actually agree with the staff report and not the Planning and Zoning Commission. And the reason that I say that is because um, when this first came to us, or, or when we first brought it to you, your attention, uh, it was actually a resident who had approached me that they had installed a pool, had put artificial turf down, thought everything was okay, and uh, went to get it uh, final inspection, and it was it was turned down. Mm -hmm. And the reason given was because artificial turf is not allowed in Trophy Club. Well, obviously, uh, at that point, I'm thinking 
you know, like you said at the meeting, there's 30 to 35 that you can, that you know of or that you've heard about. Certainly there's one on Greg Street that has it in the, in the front yard. Uh, and so it, it, it sort of shocked me and, and Greg at the same time, and we placed this on the agenda. And I think that one of the reasons that, that I placed it on the agenda was not so much that that resident had it in his pool, is that I think that we have uh, really preached and preached and preached as a town uh, water conservation. That's, that's been a, a, uh, a, a big problem over the last few years. And so I, I, today I went back and looked and uh, the mud actually had a, what they called an emergency water demand management plan that started in 93. And in 09, they, they changed that to a drought contingency plan. And then in 2011, uh, they updated that plan. I think Nick may have been on the, uh, the mud at the time. And so they updated that plan. Uh, and the reason that they did that is because at that point in time, uh, Texas was experiencing a major drought. And so I went back and looked at that as well. And since 2000, the U.S. Drought Monitor had, uh, was started in 2000. And since 2000, the longest duration of drought in Texas lasted 271 weeks, beginning on May 4, 2010, and ending on July 7, 2015. The most intense period of drought occurred the week of October 4, 2011, where D4 affected 87.99% of Texas land. Now, D4 is exceptional drought an exceptional and widespread crop and pasture losses, shortage of water creating water emergency. And that was 87% 80, of Texas in 2015. We, we actually get about 33 inches of rainfall in Trophy Club in, in this area. And if you go back to the beginning of 2012, 2013, that time period, we experienced 24 inches and 23 inches all year. And so, so the MUD had instituted stage one drought contingency. And what that did in 2011 is that it, it took us from watering whatever we want to watering twice a week. And, and the drought got so bad after those two years that at the beginning of 2015, the MUD went to stage two. And stage two is just once a week. I think we, uh, Adam at the time, I think asked for an exception to water the soccer fields, if you remember. Mm -hmm. And so, boom, the, the, the skies opened up in 2015, we got a ton of rain. A and the, the lake filled up, everything came back to normal. So the mud went out of stage two, went out of stage one, but what we did and what the mud actually calls it now is, uh, if I can find it here, uh, some kind of water conservation. So we, we are out of all stages of drought, but we are still, uh, still under stage one restrictions as far as watering. So we don't allow watering on Monday uh, for anybody, and we only are allowed to water twice uh, a week. So we stayed under those state, even though we're out of stage one and the lakes are full, everything's great right now, we're still as a town uh, practicing water conservation. And I think that's basically coming from Fort Worth. Mm -hmm. So all that to say this, the reason that, that I thought that this should be an allowable use is because we constantly preach conservation. The mud preaches conservation, the town preaches conservation. We're always uh, hearing about uh, conserving water, conserve water, conserve water. And so uh, we did pretty good as a town over the last several years, but as the skies have opened and the lakes have filled, uh, we are we just last year hit for the first time uh, a billion gallons pumped through the trophy club system. That was the first time that it's ever happened. It had been in the 950 million, but last year we hit uh, 1 billion and that increase, we were, you know, in 2013, 2014, it was about 18,000 gallons on average per resident. That dropped when we started all these conserva conserva uh, uh, 
when, when we started these practices, but that has since this year gone up for the first time after about four years. So I think that, uh, I think that it, it's hypocritical of us to preach conservation and then turn around and say, oh, you know, you uh, can conserve water by putting artificial turf in your yard, but yet we're only going to allow it in the backyard. We're not going to allow it in the front. We're not going to allow it where anybody can see it. We're not going to allow it where golfers can see it. We're only going to allow it in the backyard. And so I think it's hypocritical of us to sit here and say that uh, we are trying to conserve water as a district for the mud and as a town, and then turn around and say, but by the way, you have to have live turf in your yard. You have to water it. You have to keep it. Because it's my understanding that if a if a yard or if live landscape dies, that that is a code violation. Is that correct? That is correct. And that upon uh, activation with the code compliance officer, you've got 45 days to replace it. Right. And so I think it's hypocritical <coughs> of us to sit here and say that we really want to conserve water and then turn around and say, but you have to have live turf and you have to water that and keep it living. Uh, and, and use an, an exorbitant amount of water to, to do that. And so I am leaning more towards uh, what staff recommendation it is, but, and I'll let everybody else speak and then I'll come back. There are some things that I would like to, uh, that I think that PNZ missed the boat on as far as when they just uh, did an outright ban that they should have had uh, some additional uh, requirements. So I'll shut up now. Councilmember Jensen. Oh, we, are you done? <laughs> I could go on. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard you talk that long. Okay, so question about uh, the permit. My question is, is to Mr. Beach. Uh, so PNZ recommended that a permit be filed, but staff recommended that a, uh, a, a drainage plan be submitted. So what, why was PNZ saying a permit? I mean, we know that they're going to submit something. So what what does a permit do that we, why do we need a permit? Well, two purposes. One is because <clears throat> we'd like an inspection to man make sure that the turf was installed per manufacturer's suggestions or specification. specification. Okay. And the other is, is to make sure that we don't have people doing it without the permit, period. The graining and drainage, it's uh, PNZ did not have any problems with people having artificial turf in their backyards. The problem that we have is, is uh, you get a pooling effect from this because it doesn't absorb as fast, and we're concerned with how it'll have an effect on the drainage well, into other neighbors. The town requests part of their deal is submission of a certified grading plan. To me, that takes care of that issue. Uh, without the need of a, a permit. Uh, thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Okay. So uh, I agree with everything Philip said. I um, I don't know what the issue is of on the golf course. I am a supporter of landowner rights. That homeowner should have the right to do with their property what they want to do. We don't require a permit for anybody putting sod down. This is no different. I, I could care less what somebody does with their yard. So, uh, my comments. Councilmember Kurtz. Uh, I have two comments. One is uh, I wish Philip would do a little more due diligence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just starting. Not uh, and uh, two, uh, to circle back, I I'd like to understand more why you only want the um, turf where it can't be seen. And I know you didn't go with it, but right. where PNZ uh, wanted that, whereas, you know, I, I just in my neighborhood, and I think we live in a, in a nice neighborhood, every yard looks different. The color grass looks different, the, the height is different, it's mowed at different times. I know in the backyard we have trees and we can't get grass to grow. So, uh, you know, people, folks like us would love to do turf because it'll make it look nicer, except we're on the golf course. So golfers can either see muddy backyards that are under the trees or they can see grass, but it's going to be turf. So I, I don't understand, well, do we think it's not going to look as good as grass and that's that's the reasoning or I, I just trying to understand? The basic reasoning was <clears throat> to try to maintain some control. If you can look at these samples over here, you can see different types of grass, right. 
You can see different colors of grass. And what would be to stop somebody from putting down uh, purple grass with a yellow pea in it? Right, I, I understand they say that, but you can put all different types of real grass out there. You can, you can do the exact same thing with natural grass, Bermuda and a thing, all different kinds and have different textures and everything else. And I would, I, I get what you're saying. Someone puts Boise State in their backyard. I get what you're, and, and that was the intention to but eliminate that. I guess, yes, I guess I understand your intention. What, I, what I'm stating is I think we could go at it a different way as opposed to saying you just can't have artificial turf if anybody can see it. This is my opinion. So I get what you, I, I understand what your thought process was now. My assumption is 99% of the people will try to make their yards look better, but it may not be what the other 99% of the people think looks better. Okay, I understand your thought process. Thank you. Okay, Councilmember Barreau. Uh, thank you, sir. Um, I appreciate all the back and forth and, and, and trying to, you know, understand what everybody's thoughts are on this. Um, my question is more around uh, the, the I, I'm generally in favor of, of turf, and I understand Jeff's concern about the color. I think, I think when we get into the super aesthetic things, you guys have talked, have heard me talk about this before. Um, I, I prefer to leave those things more to HOA. Uh, than to town ordinance um, because when you get into aesthetics, it kind of needs to be more hyper local. Um, so I would agree with Tim on that in that respect. Um, my question is more about the grading plan, though. Um, so, Tommy, I can, and correct me if I'm wrong, but if I feel like for some random reason, pouring a slab all across my backyard, no structure, just a slab, just a big old patio right up to the drainage easement. I don't need to submit a plan, right? As long as it's less than 24 inches above grade, that is correct. Okay. Likewise, if I want to do the same, now that's going to affect drainage significantly if I do it. <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> likewise, if I do the same with crushed granite, right. there's no. Likewise, if I want to just get out there and move a bunch of dirt around and build a bunch of berms and change drainage, I don't have to do any, I don't have to require, I don't have to submit anything to do that. That is correct. If I impact drainage, whether by modifying the easement or by impacting neighbors, I'm liable for that. Yes, sir. So from my standpoint, in my constant striving to simplify everything and make everything consistent, I would personally, if I was installing it, I would want a grading plan because I'm kind of OCD about drainage in my yard but I don't know if we need to necessarily Im implement that step as a portion of the process because of the fact that it's not consistent with other modifications. Um, so that's just my opinion, although I'm okay with it as presented, because if you're spending all this money to do this in the first place, it's gonna be a part of your install regardless. So I'm just throwing that out there as that's my viewpoint, but I, 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 I agree with it. I can approve it as it's presented. All right, so I asked to speak next. I just have a couple of comments. Uh, generally, I support the idea of a permit uh, just to control the submission of uh, the drainage plan, uh, which I would include a final inspection personally. Um, I don't want to get overly specific about color ranges and heights of turf. Um, I think you've got that with grasses anyway and people that overseed in the winter, everything changes. Um, I do have some concern about all of a sudden now we decide in our backyard to paint logos of things or uh, uh, white stripes for the putting aisle or whatever that might be. But I guess if somebody does that, that's their choice. They could do something in their backyard now. Uh, but that's just my general comments about it. Uh, Greg Lamont, you have the floor. Uh, I agree with Nick. I think we should have proper permitting just for the flow of water. Uh, I think as all our trees mature, it becomes more and more difficult, especially in the front, to get grass to grow. I'm on my third series of putting in sod in the front, and that's, it's failed. So uh, I, 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 I support this. And, and even going to zero scaping, we, we, we come on two or three years of droughts, then we have two, two years of something like this. That's fine, but overall, drought is an issue. Councilmember Flurry. 
I um, was more in line with what Tim was saying about it, it's most residents are going to do this to make their yards look better and um, would alleviate a lot of issues for me personally with with trees that don't allow grass to grow and you know my letters I get from my HOA. Um, but instead of just saying, okay, no turf where it can be seen, how about just putting different parameters in place to, um, you know, not allow some of the things you're talking about, the purple grass with the yellow pea or, what, or whatnot, you know, just have different parameters in place where it has to be approved or it has to be a certain kind or however you want to do it, but just to make a blanket statement of no turf where it can be seen. I think I'm agreeing with most everyone else that's saying, well, it's, you know, your lawn, you should be able to do what you want with it. And it, most cases, I think it's gonna look a lot better than, than what's currently there. So those are just my thoughts. Councilmember Schaffner. Uh, okay, let me get into the details now. Really? Um, yeah. Really? <laughs> those yeah. weren't too <laughs> So, so I think that, um, Jeff, once again, yeah, <laughs> I think that, that y you can't, if a yard dies right today, you, like you said, you have 45 days. They're going to they're gonna cite you, and you have 45 days. If we approve what's, what's approved tonight uh, without any, any meat on the ordinance as far as something that the code enforcer can uh, look at, he really can't do anything if 10 years from now, 15 years from now, the artificial turf is not fastened down if it's coming up uh, under the ordinance if we approve it the way it is he really has he has no ability to uh, cite them mm -hmm. would that be correct Basically, yes sir okay so I think that there should be and you know perhaps we can come to an agreement on certain things that the turf should do and so so I found an ordinance I don't even know where I found it. I looked at so many over the last few weeks. So um, here's here's some things that, that this ordinance had. Uh, synthetic turf shall, number one, simulate the appearance, appearance of live turf, organic turf, grass, sod, or lime. So that sort of uh, deals with, and later on we'll talk about color, but be of a type known as cut pile infill with pile fibers, a minimum height of 1.75 inches. If any of these don't make sense to you, Tommy, let me know. Uh, be manufactured from polyethylene monofilament. Be affixed to a permeable backing. Uh, have a minimum eight year no fade warranty. Uh, and then what they did is they actually said, and this sort of uh, goes along with what I said earlier about, I, I think I said that, I may have talked to somebody else about it, but uh, the use of indoor or outdoor plastic or nylon carpeting as a replacement for natural or synthetic turf shall be prohibited. Because uh, I would assume that if we approve this, uh, well, I guess you would have to have that, so I guess you couldn't go down to Home Depot and just buy the, the green row that they have and put it in your yard. The stuff that used to be in your bottom of your dad's bath yeah. boat. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't blend. <laughs> no. But we may want to put that in there just so that uh, somebody doesn't try to do that. Uh, ter let's see. And then installation, and I think we sort of have that covered, uh, sh should be installed by a licensed professional pursuant to manufacturer's requirements. Uh, be installed over a subgrade prepared to provide positive drainage on an evenly graded uh, mass of compacted, porous, crushed rock, or aggregate material. Be anchored at all ages and uh, all edges and seams. Uh, a drainage system shall be installed underneath the turf to prevent excess runoff or pooling. Uh, where multiple panels are used, the change from one panel to the next shall be readily, uh, readily visible, and seams shall not shall be joined in a tight and secure manner. Uh, an infill medium medium consisting of clean silica sand or other approved mixture shall be brushed into the fibers to ensure that the fibers remain in an upright position and to provide ballast that will help hold the turf in place and provide a cushioning effect. Um, so the, anyway, those are some of the things I found. So I, I think that uh, we, so if I refer this, can we still discuss or, or would we have to? You no, know you can't discuss okay. it. So l let's have some discussion, but I think that, uh, uh, that my inclination is to refer this to perhaps the next meeting and for me to get with staff and tell them all the different things 
that I have and perhaps come back to us. I, I think that there should be a, at least guidelines so that code enforcement 15 years from now, 10 years from now, uh, have something that they can, you know, uh, enforce. So that's my, for now. All right, Council Member Jensen. Thank you for all your work. Make motion to approve as presented by staff, not incorporating any PMZ recommendations. Do you have a second? I'll second. All right, so we are at the motion point. Uh, and so I'm gonna clear the slate because we are now talking about a motion. So if you wish to speak to the motion, you need to re-enter your name to the slate. Uh, Greg Lamont. Uh, does that include 5B as far as the homeowner is responsible if the utility company destroys it? I can see the right of way, but if they come on the property and destroy something past the right of way or in the backyard, so I, I think that would be an exception. You finished, Greg? Yeah. Councilmember Rowe. Yeah, I, I will say that I heard a few things there on Phillips laundry list that might be sensible. Um, so I would like to go ahead and, and, and conclude this with some action to get this approved, but I wouldn't be opposed to minor amendment in the future to tighten it up a little if it was something that code enforcement felt would, uh, would help them. But I would just point out that um, if we're gonna, if we're really gonna talk about siding dead grass, I mean, I'm gonna take the day off tomorrow <laughs> and go take notes. I mean, I mean, especially prior to it raining every day for a month and a half, we had no rain. And I mean, y'all know me, I'm the yard, the yard guy in my own house and I'm spent un, ungodly amount of money on water bill this month and, or this summer and not everybody did. And we're not citing people and I don't know that we should, but my point is, is that I don't know why we would impose stricter in practice, even though in code technically it's the same, in practice stricter, uh, stricter rules on someone that invested this much in their yard. So something, something to discuss though for sure. All right, I was the next person requesting to speak. I'm gonna speak against uh, the motion to approve at this point. I really would like to have some more details in front of us that I think are worth delaying two weeks to get to that point is what I would say. All right, anybody else wish to speak in reference to the motion? Philip? Yeah, I'll make an amendment to the motion and uh, I guess I'm just gonna have to read it. Um, <laughs> So my amendment will be to, in, to include uh, that synthet synthetic turf shall one simulate the appearance of live turf, organic turf, grass, sod, or uh, a lawn. Two, be a type known as cut pile infill with pile fibers a minimum height of 1.75 inches. Uh, three, be affixed to a permanent backing. Four, have a minimum eight year no fade warranty. And five, um, synthetic turf shall be maintained in a green fade, fadeless condition and free of weeds, debris, tears, holes, and impressions. That's my amendment. All right, so do we have a second on the amendment? I'll second. All right, so we are dealing with the motion to amend anybody wish to speak on the motion to amend yeah Philip? yeah, yeah. And let me just say that i'd much rather uh refer this to a future meeting so that some of these things can be ironed out i don't think that, uh, i thought that pmz once it went to pmz that it would come back to us or i thought staff would come back to us with uh you know different uh more sensible uh, restrictions or not restrictions, but recommendations. And so I think it would be better to refer this and get all that ironed out. Uh, I'm gonna speak uh, about how I might vote in this particular case. Uh, I would probably vote in favor of the motion to amend only because it would send us back to the main motion that was amended. And in case it was to pass, I would rather have these uh, five items in the main motion as opposed to not. However, I would probably still vote against uh, the main motion so that we could deal with a referral. Mr. Jensen. A vote for my motion is a vote for landowner rights, 
anything else. You're just trying to tell everybody how they should take care of their own property. Their property. Let them do what they want to do. Councilman Moreau. Hey, Philip, can you restate the first? It was like of, of a particular type. S synthetic turf. No, oh, the was, second one is turf. Term of art in there that I Th there like. There was a specific yeah. material. Yeah, my attorney friend heard a term of art in there. Yeah, and I want to know what it was. It's be of a type known as cut pile infill with a with pile fibers, a minimum height of 1.75 inches, which I think is that. Okay, so cut pile. Okay, so it's, cut pile is kind of self-explanatory. I just wanted to hear it restated. Okay. All right. Anybody else wishing to wishing to speak on the amendment? Any citizens wish to speak on the amendment? You may come forward and state your name and address and then speak. You have to focus on the amendment if you would, please. Well, I'm just opposed to turf. For well, I really don't know enough about that, but I do have a golf course lot, and so I won't be looking across it. And okay. Turf. We'll come back to you if, if the amendment passes. All right, no one wishes to speak on the amendment. We will vote on the amendment. All in favor of the amendment as stated, please show your hands. So I have Lamont, Kurtz, Schaffner, Sanders, and Flurry vote for the amendment. All opposed? Uh, and Roe and Jensen voted not in favor of the amendment. So it, the amendment did pass, so we are back to the main motion as amended. Does anyone wish to speak on the main motion as amended? Eric? I don't even know what Philip added. I don't, Philip doesn't know what he added. That's the most ridiculous thing. You have no idea what you just said. Philly ethylene. You don't know what that is? I didn't say that. What'd you say? I didn't say that. What'd you call, what'd you say? What is it? You gotta put on You have glasses. no idea. No. What I, is it? What's it? Tell me that word you just said. Spell it out. I didn't I'm say gonna type polyethylene. I'm going to I'm going to Google it. What is it? I didn't say polyethylene. I know, but what is it? What's the word? Okay. I, uh, Nick, I asked a question. He could answer the He answered it. No, sir, he hadn't. He What's did. Word? Did you answer the question? I, he said, that, okay, it's cut in, uh, pile infill with, is that what you were looking for? Cut that, pile? that goofy word you said. No, no, I didn't add that to the amendment. You did not say the propyl ethylene I, thing? I said it when I was speaking, but I did not add not it. Not in the amendment. amendment. No. Okay. Can you please read what the amended motion is, Nick? Uh, no, I cannot do that. <laughs> So if Philip wants to repeat his items one through five, he may do so. S simulate an appearance of live turf, organic turf, grass, sod, or lime. Be of a type known as cut pile infill with pile fibers, a minimum height of 1.75 inches. Uh, be, uh, see, be effect, affixed to a permanent backing and ha have a minimum eight year no fade warranty. And then the last one was uh, Free of tears and free of tears. Yeah, Debris. maintain it's synthetic that. turf shall be maintained in a green, fadeless condition and free of weeds, debris, tears, hose, and impression. I, I, I tried just to use <coughs> the ones that were simple. I, that's again why I think that it should be referred because there's probably other things that staff would see that uh, th that are not being presented. Tonight. Okay, Eric, you still have the floor. I'm done. Thank you. All right, Alicia. I think the amendment gave reasonable, reasonable parameters to address the topic of purple lawns because grass, live grass, green, I think that gave enough reasonable parameters for residents to stay within to address those other concerns. But I also agree that there's probably more to this issue that's gonna come up that's not gonna be taken care of tonight. Ryland. Uh, yeah, there's there's too much language in there that's too subjective for my taste. Uh, I, I support the ability of folks to install this stuff, but if we're going to be talking about it in the context of code enforcement, we need to make sure that it's actually enforceable. I mean, the term free of weeds, hey, I bust my butt to try and keep my yard looking good, and I would gladly love to force everybody else to have everything free of weeds. And that is impossible. So to impose something, to the fact that we're trying to impose things that we don't impose on regular folks with regular grass, 
which is not making any sense. Um, so I can't vote on the motion as amended. I don't support it. However, I want to make it clear that I do support this, this as a ground cover uh, in some fashion if we can figure out the right way to do it. Councilmember Lamont. Yeah, I, beginning to come to the impression we should uh, table this or delay it. Uh, there's too many unknowns here that staff doesn't have proper time to evaluate it. All right. Uh, so we are back to the main motion as amended. The main motion as amended is to approve uh, staff's recommendations, I believe is how that was worded. Uh, and the amendment dealt with those five specific items about type of turf, looks, color, those kinds of things. Any further discussion about this? All right. <laughs> uh, I would uh, move to refer the entire matter of 6B to the next council meeting. Second that, if we have to. Need All a right. second. Sanders made a motion to refer, and Lamont seconded. Jensen? I will be not voting in favor of referring. I will be voting to close this matter and move on to other business. We've had a, we've got enough time to resolve it now. If there's something you want to change, change it now. There's no need to have another meeting about it. All right, anybody else wish to speak? All right, we will call the question. All in favor of the motion to refer to the next meeting, please show your hands. Uh, Lamont, Sanders, Rowe, Flurry. All opposed, same sign. Kurtz, Schaffner, and Jensen. The motion to refer does pass. Uh, the item has been dealt with. And uh, Philip, uh, I do suggest that you go ahead like you suggested and try to meet with staff and bring us back some wording that we can debate and deal with. I do think councils have, uh, the council members have made valid points that we probably ought to somehow deal with. Uh, and not overstep our bounds totally. So thanks, Bill. thanks everybody for your input. Thanks, Tom. Thank you, guys. All right. Uh, we are down to uh, item number seven, discussion of items for future agenda to include agenda items for consideration on the November 13th council agenda and items for the town council future agenda list. Specifically, it is time for us to at least give the opportunity to discuss items on your future agenda list, which we will do so after anyone comments about the next agenda, November the 13th. Uh, what I heard earlier was um, a request to have more information provided to us about location, cost, purpose, details about the cameras that was referred to, and so the question I would ask uh, uh, Tom is can that be at our next meeting is that too soon no I think we can schedule that all right so if we'll if there's no objection we'll place that item on our November 13th agenda if possible anybody else have anything for the 13th agenda all right hearing none we are then going to go to our future agenda list and there are three items that uh, we will give updates on and um, deal with, and you'll have an opportunity to add things to the future agenda list. Item two was the, I mean, uh, item 7A uh, was from future agenda items list discussion of green ribbon grants for the beautification along the sound wall. That's an item I placed on the agenda, uh, thinking that we would have an opportunity to deal with some beautification at the end of the sound wall. Uh, we have got most of the sound wall done and uh, what I would do is if I can get all the information about the green ribbon grant process from COG prior to our next meeting I'll place it on the agenda if not it would be the meeting after that any questions with that item all right item 7b on the future agenda list discussion and take appropriate action regarding uh, uh, amending the town's sign ordinance Lamont you place that 
on the agenda? Was there something specific about the sign ordinance that you were concerned about? I just think we need a complete review of it because obviously, according to our town attorney, stuff that we've placed in there is not in well, effect. The one issue out there is in the email I sent y'all last week. It started on the issue of political signs. Then I left legal opinion in the email to leave it confidential there. I can answer any questions during the executive yeah. session. I just suggest that we do it after the elections. Well, yeah. Obviously, it's not next to <laughs> meeting. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. We'd have to work fast anyway. Uh, I also included some stuff in there on things going on on the businesses and the Tom Thumb Shopping Center that have been ongoing. I went back, I guess, about a year or two to get to the real oyster signs. Any other issues on any of those? Uh, I'll any just add, um, since uh, I, I mentioned this to David in the, yeah. e in the email I sent to him, but since we're discussing as a body, I, m my pr preference, and I expressed this to David, was that if aspects of it that he sees as a potential issue for us to be able to legally enforce, bring them forward to us with recommendations, and there's the one that he discussed or that he brought forward. So I'm, you know, that's the that's my main focus. Anything else, it's not okay, well, really I, a big priority. Didn't want to talk about anything tonight. That's just, just right. Yeah. Well, I will I will say this, and I think I told Councilmember Montes the other day, since the email. Um, a lot of times we're compared with HOA regulations. When you're dealing with constitutional issues, landowner rights, things like that, an HOA has much more. It's apples and oranges. Mm -hmm. If an HOA takes an action on a sign, it's not a governmental action. Therefore, there's no constitutional violation or anything like that. Whereas we are bound by the Constitution, the HOAs are not. So. All right, Riley, did you finish? That was it. I'm sorry. No, no we're good. Philip? I think what you need to do is look at that whole temporary signage section because that seems to be where most of the disagreement between our previous lawyer and you exists. The temporary signs are going to bring into play all of the yard signs for people's children, all of the all the activities, all of the nonprofits. And, and I, I've tried that case for That's another city where we had sign zones that allowed them, and you had to be a nonprofit, and the court said you can't distinguish on that. Right, and that's that's why I think that you need to look at that and well, tell us where we are deficient in our ordinance. I, I, I've told you the part that is not enforceable. It's a very small portion of the entire sign ordinance. Yeah, but I sent you a email yesterday that I have not heard anything back on. I, I did respond to you yesterday and this morning oh. about about the sign, and I asked you where it was located. It was in the right of way. Right, and I said. And I did respond yesterday. I know, but I said that there's there's a second requirement of permission that you need to look at that perhaps is something we shouldn't have in there. It depends on the situation. That's if, it's, if the property owner is the one that put it there, that's one thing. If someone else has permission to put it there, and also you're dealing with an area that's a PD, is that residential zoning or is it non-residential zoning? But what I'm saying is that we have a uh, ordinance on the books okay. that if you put a sign on commercial property, you have to get written permission from- And file it with the city. And file it with the city. I'll that tell you now, there's no constitutional violation to that requirement. Okay, so it's-, it's I'll good. tell you that right here in open public. Okay, cool. Okay. And I did respond yesterday. I, well, I don't. I don't. We had, we had a back and forth on that. I'll forward the. I don't know back. if you the second part. Did you? Okay. I didn't see your response on that, but that's good. That's that's what I. But you said I hadn't from. responded. Yeah. So. But I'm, what, I guess what I'm saying is I'm not trying to be uh, confrontational. What I'm saying is is if there are things in that 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 you disagree with the previous legal representation, then we should probably should know. I'll that. send out an Council. email tomorrow with the overall legal opinion about it. Okay. And, if, and, and, and a lot of it's going to be what battles we want to pick. What and then about. maybe perhaps give us recommendations on what we should change. I will. And if it should be changed. Okay. And if it's okay. a slippery slope. That's fine. That's what I'm trying to avoid. Okay. No problem. Mm -hmm. All right. I uh, entered a request to speak. I'm concerned okay. about these signs that go in yards that they stake in yards and they put all the Oh. Their kids' <laughs> birthday wishes on it. <laughs> 24 hours. Are, are they particular signs or grandchildren signs? Well, they, they were for twins. the children. It was happy birthday. Mine they were both twins. Oh. <laughs> Must be an immediate <laughs> family member of yeah. the relative twins within make it really 72 long. hours. Okay, I'm birthday. sorry I brought it up. Wait I knew that fixed that <laughs> sign into turf. I was just. Several <laughs> yards. <laughs> it does. It went across to your neighbors. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. No worries. Thank All right. Um. All right, so um, th that's the update kind of on the sign issue. Uh, obviously, you're saying bring it back, Greg. 
Uh, we have some data there. Um, I'll just say to to Tom, if that's something that could come back next meeting, that's okay. okay. But if it can't and goes a further meeting, that's fine to me. And I'll send information out before the next meeting too. All right, and then item uh, 7C uh, from the future agenda item list discussion and possible action between the town and EDS4B regarding long range planning and use of partial between breadwinners and Trophy Club Town Hall. Uh, Tom, we talked about potentially having some kind of meeting with uh, EDC folks, kind of as a planning or brainstorming meeting. Uh, I'm only kind of say, do we have a date for that or when are we trying to target that? Uh, we don't have a date uh, at this point, but we're looking to put that on a schedule on the quarterly basis. So we're, we're hopeful that we would do that this uh, first quarter of this within the next uh, month or two. All right, thank you, Council Member Jensen. My recommendation would be for council can give the, a liaison kind of some direction. And we can also do that in executive session that he can then pass on to the EDC. And I think at this point is all that needs to be done without a joint meeting. That could work. All right. So uh, we can discuss that in a little more detail later if you wish to, Eric. I don't have any objection to that. I just want to get it moved forward. Yep. Same. All right. Uh, any items you wish to add to the future agenda list, Council? Seeing no one seeking the floor, we will then move on. Uh, Philip, I think we've covered everything on the agenda. Is that right? Oh, okay. Another failure. Another failure. Another failure. He's, 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 he's researching poly. He's researching yards. Poly by Alaska. Okay. Uh, at this time, uh, after I read this, we will go into executive session. It is 8.06 p.m. <clears throat> Pursuant to the following designated section of the Texas Government Code, annotated Chapter 551, Texas Open Meeting Act, the Council will convene into executive session to discuss the following. A, consultation of, with attorney in reference to breach of contract issues. Item B, Section 551072, deliberation regarding real property uh, with sub-items 1 and 2, uh, north of State Highway 14, east of Trophy Club Drive, and State Highway 114, west of Trophy Club Drive. And then item C, section 551074, personnel matters under section one, discuss or deliberate the appointment evaluation and duties of a public officer employee, quarterly goals and objectives, um, and council appointments. It is, we are convening into executive session. Uh, the light's on. It is 923 and we have returned and are in regular session. Item number nine, consider and take appropriate action regarding the executive session. Recognize Councilmember Rowe for a motion. Yeah, I would make a motion that we direct the town manager to uh, continue engagement with outside legal services uh, as discussed. We have a second. Uh, second by Jensen. Any other discussion? All in favor, show your hands. All opposed, same sign. It does unanimously pass. It is 923. We are adjourned. Oh.